RisaCalc is a web-based application for individual component design, which provides engineers with an easy-to-use interface that allows for full control over inputs such as geometry and loading, in addition to graphical and numerical results, including robust detailed reports. In this video, we'll take a look at the aluminum member design functionality in RisaCalc. So in this project, I already have one beam here, a single span beam. And if I go ahead and click on properties here, we can see the material options that I have available. So I can select my material. In this case, I've already chosen aluminum. We can select our shape type. So I'll choose a Z shape here, and then we can choose the shape itself. So I'll just pick one of these Z shapes. And then we can choose the material. We can also go ahead and look at the properties of the particular shape. So in this case, we can see the properties of the Z and, and all the different dimensions of the Z and how those dimensions calculate the section properties. We can also rotate the section or we can go up to the gear here and we can look at the codes available. So here we have the different um, aluminum ADM1 codes for uh, different things. So in this case, I'm gonna choose this ASD building code. I'll go ahead and click apply to close that out. Next, I'm gonna go ahead to span. And so I wanna make some changes and add a span. So I'm gonna do, uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is make this a six foot span. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add another six foot span. So in this case, I've got two pin conditions, and then a roller condition at the end here. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and choose some of the, my design conditions. So I want to brace everything at the supports. And next, I'm gonna go ahead and brace the top flange of the aluminum member fully braced uh, along the whole length. I could also go ahead and make some changes to the K factor and the CB factor, but now I'm just gonna go ahead and add some loads. And so if I click loads here, I can go ahead first and add a point load. So let's first add a 250 pound point load for live load, and maybe we'll add this at the three foot location, so in the first part of the span. Next, I can go ahead and add maybe a dead load and make this 150 pounds, and let's add this at nine feet. So we've got those two point loads in. Next, I wanna go ahead and add some distributed loads in. So the first distributed load will make this 250 pounds a linear foot, and make it from the zero location to the six foot location. So on this front span here. And then next I wanna add a linearly decreasing load to the back span. So let's go ahead and add in another distributed load. And we start this at 25 or, or 0.25 kips per linear foot. And then let's decrease that down to 0.15 kips per linear foot and set the location at a starting point of six feet. And so now we've got that distributed load there. And so I've got two dead loads, and then a live load and the point load. Next, I can see my load combinations are automatically being created. If I wanted to, I could edit the load combinations and how they're being created. But now I can go ahead and just hit the toggle unity check button to set the unity check for this particular member. And so once the calculation is complete, we will get our uh, controlling load combination here. So we've got a governing load combination, 1.2 dead plus 1.6 live, our controlling code check, and then we get our graphical report. Additionally, we have our detailed report. I'm just gonna minimize that for now. And so we can see here, I've got my reactions turned on. I could go ahead and look at deflections. We could go ahead and look at our moment diagram and even our shear diagram. And then along this diagram, we can actually see at different locations what's the value of the shear or the value of the moment at that particular location. We could also turn on and off different things like the loads here. And then we can go ahead and open up the detailed report. And so the detailed report is just gonna have basically all this information in table form. So we can see the loads here that are applied, maybe our diagrams, very similar. And then finally into the calculations, we can see step-by-step step the limit states that are being used to calculate the maximum code check in this case. So if we expand the bending and axial check here, we can see the different uh, parts of the aluminum bending and axial check for the combined bending and axial check from that particular equation. Next, we can go ahead and add another member. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a column here. And so once we create this new member, I can go ahead again to manipulate the properties. So I'm gonna set this as an aluminum member and let's call this a pipe here. And so we can set the size of our pipe. So let's make this maybe a four and a quarter diameter pipe. We can set again the material and maybe we could set a rotation. In this case, obviously pipe rotation doesn't matter. Next, let's go ahead and look at span. So I'm gonna make this a freestanding condition. So we want to select and change that uh, boundary condition. So I'm gonna make that a free boundary condition at the top there. Next, we'll look at the design. 
So again, I'll change this for out of plane at all the supports. So we don't want any out of plane uh, bracing. We could also change our K factor here. So I'm going to set a custom K factor and just make this 2.0. And then I'm going to go ahead and just start to apply loads. So let's first apply a point load. So I'm going to make a point load. Let's call it a dead load. And we'll turn our loads here. We'll call it a dead load at the top there. So we'll make it one and a half. Uh, let's make it a half a kip. And we'll make this in the dead load category. Next, we can go ahead and add a distributed load. So we'll make this a wind load and make this load variable uh, along the length of the member. And so let's go ahead and make this from 150 pounds to 250 pounds a linear foot. And we can make that um, from zero to 10 feet. Or maybe we could even change that to make that from zero to eight feet. Also, the load combinations are getting created for us. So we can see all the load combinations that are going to be used in the ASD calculation. And so we can go ahead then and toggle on our unity check. And so once our unity check is complete, we can see in this particular case, we're a bit overstressed. And so we could obviously change the loads or maybe we want to just change the size of our member. So we had a four and a quarter. So maybe we want to jump up to a five or five and a half even. So let's go maybe to a five and a half and then rerun the unity check here to see if that satisfies our design. In this case, it does. Again, we have our different values for our uh, shear and moment diagrams. Maybe let's look at the axial diagram to see that uh, condition or that value there. We can also turn on again the reactions and the deflection of this particular freestanding element. And then we can go ahead to our detailed report and look at our diagrams again, look at our reactions, and then finally into our calculations. So if we look at our axial compression here, we can see the different information for the calculation of member buckling stress and the calculation of our axial compression at this particular element with all the different uh, values and all the different code references applied. Finally, when we're ready and we want to share this with other engineers, we can go ahead and click the download button. This is going to generate us a PDF report, and then we're going to be able to view all of this detailed report information in that PDF just by opening it up. We can then scroll through the report or send this report over to a code official or another engineer for review. Thank you for watching this video on aluminum member design in RisaCalc. For more information about RISA and RISA Calc, please visit RISA.com.